This is the story of one of the most recognized naval maneuvers in UNSC history. The Keys Loop. Military calendar, July 17th, 2552. Sigma Octana system. Commander Jacob Keyes of the UNSC Halberd class destroyer, the Iroquois, discovered a battle group of Covenant ships exiting slipspace near the human colony world, Sigma Octana Four. The Covenant had brought four ships to the planet, a pair of frigates escorting a carrier and a destroyer. The frigates maneuvered to engage the Iroquois, while the carrier and destroyer moved towards the planet. Two factors helped Commander Keyes figure out the fact that the Covenant was on its way to the planet. One was a theoretical paper from a recovered victim of the Spartan II augmentation program. The other, an hourly report from the Archimedes sensor outpost logging a large mass traveling through slip space. Putting those two components together, the commander quickly confirmed the incoming threat. Keyes and his crew, after quelling an attempted mutiny, set a near-intercept course for the destroyer. The frigates, meanwhile, charged and fired a pair of plasma torpedoes, ship-to-ship -ship weapons capable of obliterating the Iroquois. Keys tracked the torpedoes, and in two questionable decisions, launched one of their Shiva nuclear warheads in the opposite direction, and rotated the Archer missile launch pods backwards. Just as the torpedoes neared the human ship, Keys activated the ship's emergency thrusters, blasting the vessel on a new course and causing the torpedoes to narrowly miss them. The Covenant continued to guide the plasma towards Iroquois, however, curving the blast around to track the ship. Keys, overloading the reactor, put all of the ship's power into the thrusters, continuing their course to the destroyer carrier. With two plasma torpedoes bearing down on them, the Iroquois raised the underside of the Covenant destroyer, damaging its shield as it passed. The trailing plasma couldn't adjust quickly enough and smashed directly into the alien ship, wrecking its weakened shield and burning through its hull. Keys quickly fired a volley of Archer missiles backwards as the Iroquois blasted past the enemy vessels. Those missiles would prove to be the destroyer's doom. The UNSC had been fighting the Covenant for 27 years. The highly regimented human forces tended to be able to hold their own in ground engagements. Space battles, however, often spell disaster for the UNSC, as their foes had ridiculously powerful and resilient ships. It was generally understood that it took three human ships to successfully counter one Covenant vessel. The UNSC had powerful weapons at their disposal, such as magnetic accelerator cannons, highly explosive archer missiles, and tactical nuclear bombs. However, the Covenant had unbelievably powerful shields that could withstand any single one of those weapons without taking damage to the ship's superstructure. After almost three decades of war, Keyes knew he had to think outside of the box in order to survive this battle. The Iroquois was the only warship close enough to defend the planet. The Iroquois executed a slingshot maneuver around the dark side of Sigma Octanus IV, preparing to re-engage the enemy battle group. As they came around, the frigates retargeted the human ship, warming another round of plasma torpedoes. However, they hadn't noticed the nuclear device drifting towards them. The frigates survived the blast, but their shields failed from the power of the nuke. Keys quickly fired two Mac rounds and hundreds of archer missiles at the helpless frigates. One was perforated by the power of the Mac round, while the other was split in half. The 
first was completely destroyed as the force from the missiles reached its reactor. The other was finished off by the remaining Archer missiles. At this point, Commander Keyes realized that the final alien ship had disengaged from the fight. The massive carrier had moved to the northern hemisphere of the planet and deployed 34 dropships, all headed to a major city called Cote d'Azur. Keyes quickly contacted Fleetcom. After informing them of the invasion, he prepared to send in the Marines. And eventually, the Spartans. But that is a story for another day. Oh man, this project was simultaneously a delight and a frustration to put together. See, I'm still learning the Blender program, and it's like my brain is wrinkling from all the new things I'm learning, but it's also like, ah, frustration from trying to figure it all out. But I figured it out. I want to thank my boy Taylor for putting the music together. I just, he's just, ah, so, so good. I love, I, this would not have been as good without this music. Thank you, man. Now, like it says in the description, every sound besides the music and my voice came from various Halo games. From things like weapons firing, to equipment going off, to different vehicles flying around. This whole thing was like putting together a puzzle, and I just loved every minute of it. The sources for the ship models are also in the description for the video, so if you guys want to see where they came from, go check them out. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.